Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here. Today I'm back for episode number two of my Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB 17 The Show. We are simulating early into the month of May, and new to this year's franchise mode are or is the option to play the critical moments or the critical situations, as you can see. And they pop up in a couple different occurrences. You know, sometimes it's late in close uh, situations with maybe your closer on the mound, or maybe it's the bottom of the ninth and you're down a run, or sometimes it's a milestone watch. So uh, I'll talk about that in a sec, but we've also got some international free agents here in the free agent pool that... I have considered signing. Some of you guys have said that I should I should assign guys like Shohei Otani and also Shin, Shintaro Fujinami or Fu, Fujinama, uh, the two Japanese pitchers, along with Tetsudo Yamada. Um, you know, those would be options, but I kind of want to let those guys. I want to play it a little bit more realistically and maybe let wait until the off season see if those guys get signed by anyone. I mean, you would expect especially Otani to go to maybe a bigger market team, but maybe we could grab the other starting pitcher who's also would be potential. Um, for cheap money. Now, the thing is, in the game, they're only looking for minor league contracts, which is unrealistic and I don't really love, but... And that's not the roster maker's fault. I mean, the OSFM guys, they're doing what they can to get those guys into the game. It's really MLB 17, the show's fault for not making more of an effort to have those guys available in some sort of fashion as international free agents. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the gameplay were the critical situations. So, you know, most of you guys know my format for my videos. I pretty much play one game in an episode. Usually the games tend to be, you know, maybe three or four weeks apart from each other. So I end up playing eight to ten games a season. Uh, but I wanted to talk about possibly maybe doing videos where I play just the critical situations for a couple weeks. As you can say, Mar as you can see, Marte gets thrown out trying to tag up there. A bad a base running decision on my part. But anyway, uh, back to what I was saying with the critical situations. So I was wondering if you guys would maybe want to see episodes where I just play the critical situations for a couple weeks. Maybe not the milestone ones, but the ones that are you know in late late and close situations, uh, game situations. So let me know what you guys think of that. I actually have already recorded and edited the next video for this series, episode three, and it is going to be in that format. So you guys are going to see it no matter what, and you can let me know what you think of it on that uh, video. But uh, I, I did see at least one comment saying that they preferred the you know sort of long one game format just because a lot of people who do franchise now are doing the critical situations. And after doing the critical situations, I think I do lean more towards doing this kind of video format. It is a little bit more enjoyable for me, and I think it does make for a better video. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Like I said, I'm going to give you guys the option to watch both and, you know, make up your minds for yourselves. So, anyway, Glass now, after giving up a pair of runs in the top of the second inning, settling back in here, a pair of strikeouts there, including one on Ryan Brown. That's actually Brown's second K of the day. Now, Alan Hansen up in the bottom of the third, the one-two count, and he's going to take strike three looking there from uh, Junior Guerra who is the starter from Milwaukee today. Milwaukee actually leading the NL Central so far, but Pittsburgh not too far out of it. Um, only six games back, so we're not, you know, we're not falling too far behind quite yet. This was a curious play. A glass now bunting with a runner on first, and it is Travis Shaw making a pretty terrible player. I don't know what he's waiting for. This was kind of a dumb animation. I know the animations and the sort of player movements are a lot or much improved in this year's game. That was a pretty terrible animation right there for Travis Shaw. So anyway, after a fielder's choice from the next batter, it's first and third with two down. Marte or stealing second base successfully right there. So it's second and third with two down for Cervelli with two strikes on him. He lines that one back up the middle for a base hit. One run is going to score. Here comes Marte. He will score easily. The throw goes all the way to home. So Cervelli successfully advances to second base. Now McCutcheon with the chance to give the Pirates the lead here with two down. Flying one to deep right field. Field, but Ryan Braun is there. He will make the grab on the warning track. And Brewers starter Junior Guerra is out of the game. So back to Glass now in the top of the fourth inning. It's Travis Shaw. He goes down on the changeup in the dirt right there. So Glass now really starting to settle in after what was a shaky second inning where he surrendered a pair of runs. Brett Phillips, who had an extra base hit against him in his first AB up. He goes down on the curveball this time. So Glass now has got the strikeout pitch working at this point. It is Polanco up. With an 0-2 count, he goes down on the changeup. So both pitchers settling in a little bit at this point. It became a bit of a pitcher's duel. Definitely a low-scoring affair. Guerra up with a runner on first. And a good defensive play right there from Josh Bell as he gets the lead runner. Now two on with two down. This ball deep into the hole for the third baseman. He goes to second, but the speedy Arcia beats the throw. So everyone's going to be safe. Base is loaded for Braun now, but Ryan Braun just browsing right there at that curveball. His third strikeout of the day. And Glass now is out of the jam. Now Phil Gosselin up with the man on first. He's going to work the walk right there. 
So two men on with one man down. And now second and third for Starling Marte. He's going to rip one to deep left field. This should be plenty deep enough to get the run home. It will be caught by the left fielder right up in front of the wall there. Both runners tagging, and everyone will be safe. A run does score. Marte just missed a home run right there. Could have had a three-run shot, but instead he will take the sack fly. Now Cervelli next up. He's going to ground this one softly to the second baseman, and that will be an easy play in time for the out. So the Brewers are out of it once again. 3-2 to two is the score of the ballgame right now, and it is Glass now earning his final out of his outing as he gets Brett Phillips to ground out there using all of his body to make that play. But Glass now's day would be done. Six innings, two runs, a solid start out of him. He has really struggled to begin the year, especially with his command, walking something like five or six guys per nine innings so far. But Polanco gets into one there. That is a long home run to deep, deep right field. This one almost a splash down. It, uh, it did end up. I think getting over the bleachers, but landed on the little patio out front. Uh, so anyway, raise the Jolly Roger indeed. That would do it for Glass now. As I said, Hudson on to pitch the seventh inning here for the Pirates. A 3-2 count, and that is going to be ripped into right field. A diving McCutcheon gets a glove on it, or it seemed to get a hand on it or something. It definitely slowed down, but the play could not be made, so it's going to be a two-out double here. And Hudson's night is going to be done. We're going to call upon Juan Nicasio, who's got a 4.07 ERA to start the year now. First pitch of his outing ripped right at the first baseman, John Jason, who was just double switched into the game along with our new reliever, Nicasio. So he makes a play right there, getting Nicasio out of the jam, and then Hansen leading off the next inning with a base hit. Hansen actually going for second here, showing off the speed, turning a single into a double, and now Jaso up. Remember, he was just double switched in. He's going to fly one to deep left field. This should be plenty deep enough to get Hansen home from third, and it will do just that. So another sacrifice fly, and just like that, it's a 5-2 to two ball game now. So the Pirates edging out there, stretching out their lead just a bit by bit. And it seems to be working. Now we've got a comfortable three-run lead for Nicasio. He gets a strikeout right there. Now we're going to go to Tony Watson here for a five-out save. And now with two down in the eighth inning, he is going to get Shaw to ground out. So Watson came in with one out in the eighth. He got the final two outs of the eighth. And now we're going to try and get him the final three outs here in the ninth. First up, it's Brett Phillips. He goes down on the slider. A strikeout for Watson there. Now two down. For Orlando Arcia, he's going to fly one to right field. This should be playable for Polanco, or excuse me, McCutcheon, and it is indeed. And just like that, the Pirates secure the 5-2 to two victory as they pick up their 14th win of the season now at 14-15. and 15, A good win over the first place division leaders. I guess that they'd be redundant, but win, dance, repeat. There you see the Pirates uh, celebration. I don't know if they actually do that in real life, but that's the one that has been assigned to them in the game. So you will be seeing a lot of that now, as they pretty much do that after every win. A little bit repetitive, but I guess uh, I guess the Red Sox pretty much do the same dance after every win nowadays. So whatever. Anyway, Pirates win. A good win, like I said. So that is going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'm out. Peace.